are here just come out of the High Court Wellington for the first call of the Bats Challenge and we had Justice Alison Court this morning. She understood the seriousness of this claim and she's identified a date on the 5th of May when hopefully we can have a full hearing of it. So it's going to be called an injunction hearing, an, an urgent interim hearing because obviously it's too much to deal with very quickly. We've got a whole lot of things we need to do today and to lead up to get everything ready for the 5th of May. Um, we have another conference with the judge this Thursday coming at 9 o'clock in the morning, but we're definitely well and truly on track. The Crown obviously aren't um, too enthusiastic about the claim and they've got a whole lot of things that they're, they're questioning about what we're doing, but there's no doubt at all that my emails and my messages have been absolutely flooded with messages phone calls from doctors, from nurses, from people working for the government on the border, from even policemen, um, oh, just so many people and from parents of people who are working in these places, from partners of people, from people in old folks homes who really don't want their partners to have to have a vaccine. People are really concerned because what seems to be is the Prime Minister and the government have focused on the spin. They've, they've, they've got this safe and effective plan, but when you read the fine print, the fine print says very different things. The fine print says they don't know if it prevents transmission or infection of the virus. So it's all very well to say it's safe and effective, but if it's not true, we have a real problem. So we're asking the court to look at the Medicines Act Section 23.1, which is the first point I wrote in my open letter to the Prime Minister, and to look at some of these other matters. We have to work out which are the most urgent ones because the court said they'll only have time to look at some, but that's my job today. Spend the day in the law library working on this as much as I can. We have to join Pfizer. I said I don't understand why Pfizer necessarily needs to be joined because Pfizer were not the decision makers. The decision maker was the government. The government's told us they've purchased 10 million vaccines, enough for everyone in New Zealand over the age of 16. And if they've purchased them from Pfizer, what's it got to do with Pfizer? But anyway, if Pfizer wants to be involved, we have to tell them about the case and give them the opportunity. That's what the judges said this morning. So that's fine if that's, what, that's, that's part of what I've got to do today, follow up with all this. So thank you everybody for your amazing support. Let'sBeFree.co.nz. .com. I'm sorry, Let'sBeFree.com. Just no, no NZ. Let's be so dub dub dub. No, so Vax Challenge at Let'sBeFree.com. And so, if you've got any information you want to share, if you've got any research, if you've got any circumstances you want to share with um, the plaintiff. Please send it to us on that address because my messages are absolutely swamped. But we've got a team of people now who are processing those and working out what's research, what's whatever. If you want to contribute to the cost of these court proceedings, that would be gratefully received. You can do that through the www.kti.org.nz page, and that's got some information about the status of the, pay, of the, of the claim on there as well. So that's our main website now for the plaintiff for people to find out what's going on. Um, and yeah, if, if the support is hugely appreciated. I'm not replying to everybody. It's absolutely impossible. I get off one phone call and I've got two more. I just cannot keep up with everybody. But it's not because I don't care about your views. It's just that it's absolutely impossible at the moment. But we're doing the very best to get this into court. It's looking like the 5th of May, which is good news. Um, for anybody that's been issued instructions to get back before then, well, you've got to obviously ask some questions, get the information, make it your own informed decision the best that you can, but know that the court is looking over the government's shoulder on this. I've already talked about the case of um, Fitzgerald and Muldoon, which is a case where a former Prime Minister, Rob Muldoon, issued directives that didn't have the law behind them. So this is a case where, um, very similar type situation, the, gov the government, the Prime Minister, making a series of sort of proclamations about what people need to do, but they're not lawful proclamations, that's what the plaintiff says. So we're hoping that the judge looking over the government's shoulder will give us a bit more balance in this whole process. So yeah, again, thanks everyone. I'm off to the library now to get this ready, do all the things we need to do to get ourselves in court on the 5th of May. Kia ora.